Okay, guys, I want to welcome everybody back to another weekly conversations with Cougars. And as we've been doing for the year now, we have some awesome conversations each Wednesday night with football players and band members, cheerleaders, administrators, coaches, teachers, you name it. Anybody who was part of our program during the 41 years of our school. And I'm so pleased to have a friend and former classmate a few years behind me with me this evening, Autumn Baggett Toussaint. And Ada, uh, Adam, Autumn, thank you for, for having some time tonight. I'm so, so looking forward to our conversation. Great to be here. Good to see you. Love seeing the cougar behind you. That's right. I'd love to tell you I'm in the old gym, but uh, we'll just pretend that I am for now. And, and as you guys can see behind Autumn, We've got a Vikings uh, uh, flag. We've got some Auburn paraphernalia. And I think she's got a Northview Cougars uh, t-shirt on tonight. So she's she's repping, repping a, a bunch of different folks this evening. And we're going to get into to all of that. Before we hit our, our way back machine button, if you would, Autumn, just tell folks where you are and tell about your family and just catch folks up to the current and then we'll hit hit the back. Uh, I am right now in Minneapolis, Minnesota. And so you'll hear a weird accent. The longer I talk to you, the more I'll lose my husband's accent. He's from Fargo. And so I'm tuned into he and his family. So I kind of drift. <laughs> I have a really weird accent. Uh, Minneapolis, Minnesota, and I am married. We've been married for 20 years. We have a 16 year old son, Kevin who is a junior in high school, holy cow. He goes to Minnetonka High School. And we live in a suburb called Excelsior, which is right on the shores of Lake Minnetonka, which is one of the larger of the 10 million lakes up here. Sort of a um, kind of a touristy area, beautiful lake, like 350 miles of shoreline, I believe. So it's a wonderful area. We're about 12 miles from downtown Minneapolis. Mm -hmm. Kind of get a west, uh, get a view for that. And I'm in the music and theater world up here, just as I have been all my life. And I'm in church ministry, which if you know me, doesn't surprise anyone. Um, so doing kind of all that up here and being a mom and being a wife and being involved in music all over the place. And I'm currently in my weight room, our workout room. We have like a loft room. Um, and so all of our sports mem memorabilia, my husband is a tennis player and a boxer. So if I flip this around, you'd see all of his tennis trophies and all of the boxing stuff. So wow. this is uh, the shared side and then the Auburn wall and the Vikings. And there's even a Minnesota Twins uh, World Series poster down there signed by all the guys. So it's kind of cool memorabilia. Very cool. Very cool. Well, it's, I, I hate to, to brag on the fact that in Sweet Home, Alabama, we had 70 degrees today in sunshine. Share with everybody about today's weather for you and yours. Sure. Today, the high was negative four, which is higher than yesterday, where the high was negative 12. So the high was negative four, and the wind chill, in, or, in other words, it, it feels like, I believe it was a negative 23. And how much snow is on the ground right now? We have about a foot. We haven't gotten snow in about three, four days. So I fully expect a white Valentine's Day. Wow. Well, Autumn, we've got a whole bunch of cougars who've rolled in and want to say hello to you. So let me let me get to them. We got Coach Randy Hicks. Hey. We've got Kevin Jackson who says roll tide. Oh, that's okay, buddy. <laughs> my mom and Cece both say to tell you hello oh. Jason Mullins and, hey, Jason. Jason, and Jason says that is way too cold it's it, I agree and I'm here it, it is too cold but I can't move I'm I'm married and his family is all here and I actually moved my mom here um a year and a half ago oh wow yeah. wow yeah for wow. a month or so yeah. Well, speaking of, of another blast from the past, Rick Cazanay says War Eagle. <laughs> hey, Rick. And Shirley C says to tell you hello, of course. Hi, Miss C. Now, oh, I love all, I can see all their faces. 
Shirley C has set the bar really high. The 50 odd uh, conversations I've had, by far the most popular is Shirley C. The most I popular it. views. We'll see if we can get you up there as well. But that's, she really set a, a high bar for I think these I've conversations. Done I think I've watched four. Mm -hmm. Sorry, yeah. weeknights are tough. Weeknights well, are tough. Autumn, let's let's now get back in our our 1980s time machine. And you were the class of '89 with my brother Rob. You were a freshman my senior year, but we certainly knew each other. Our families knew each other. Uh, in fact, Rob tells a great story about going to the Auburn's. Uh, spring training day and getting to meet Bo Jackson and That's right. yeah. the, all kind of great memories. But before you came to Northview, where where did you go to, to middle school, elementary school? What part of town did you grow up in and those kind of things? Right. So I was actually born in Noonan, Georgia, the home of Alan Jackson. Mm -hmm. um, and I lived there until I was one. So I don't remember it at all. And then we moved to Auburn Opelika. And we were there until I was 10. And that's when we moved to Dothan. Um, my dad is a minister. So as a minister, you kind of move around about every 10 years. So we moved to Dothan in 80 mm -hmm. um, and we're in Dothan all the way through my high school years. And then when I graduated from Northview, I went to Sanford. So that's, that's kind of, yeah. So I went to um, Montana Street Elementary School and then I went to Honeysuckle for one year actually because I lived either inside or outside the store. I can't remember what the boundaries were then, but I, um, sixth grade was at Honeysuckle and then we moved. Mm -hmm. So over kind of by Deer Path, that area, actually not far from you guys. So then I switched to Gerard for seventh and eighth grade. So by the time I got to Northview in ninth grade, I knew all of my friends from Honeysuckle mm -hmm. and all of my friends from Gerard, plus all of my church friends. So it just felt Northview was awesome. All of those people got to come together. That's what yeah. was good. Well, it's, I want to ask you, you grew up uh, with some parents who were very well known in the community. Your, your father had a very a public position, the church as well as responsibilities with Auburn's uh, football program or maybe the sports programs. I, I don't know if it covered other sports, but I want you to share a little bit of that experience because he was kind of a, 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 one of our rock stars because everybody knew Dr. Baggett. So I want you to, I don't know, I'm not saying that you grew up in his shadows at all, but you know, it's, it's kind of like, he's a little bit of a rock star for everybody back in the day. Yeah, and he remains that way to me, of course. There's lots of him in this room. So he um, grew up actually with Pat Dye in Augusta, Georgia. Mm -hmm. And they played football together and they ran track together on Magnolia Lane at a little club called Augusta National. And so dad, when we moved to Opelika Auburn, Doug Barfield was the coach then. And dad knew Doug from, uh, just because dad knew everybody, and he knew um, the athletic director at the time. And they said, you know, a lot of times our guys will be going through things, but they don't want to talk to the coaches about it. Would you be interested in coming and just sort of being a listening ear, kind of like a social worker, um, mm -hmm. not necessarily a chaplain at that time, just sort of a count, an unofficial counselor. So he did that a little bit with Doug Barfield. And then when Coach Dye was called to Auburn, Coach Dye called my dad, he called him Bobby, and he said, he said, Bobby, I told him I'd come, but I've already talked to the NCAA and asked if I could have an official chaplain for the football program. And they said, sure, that's fine. Um, as long as he's not paid, he can do all the chaplaining stuff that he wants to do. And as long as he doesn't represent a certain denomination, that he's just more of like the social worker. And I'll tell you, that made a lot of mamas of some some football boys very happy to hear that there was a chaplain on staff. Yeah. Uh, and so that, that's kind of how that started. So we started going to, or I started going to the games uh, right after we moved to Opelika Auburn when Barford was still coach, probably at about age three or four. And a lot of the kids would run to the end zone and slide. That's when um, Jordan here at the time had grass in one of the end zones. And of course, all the kids would end up sliding down the hill, you know, whatever. And I would just be locked into the game. And my dad said, even at like age four, age five, age six, I was just like, 
explain that to me, explain this to me. So by the time dad became the official chaplain and I was able to be on the field for most of the games, I was just in the heart of things, you know, pretending to call plays and chatting with the guys. And of course that's um, right when the program started turning around and things got a little more serious because up to that point, we pretty much lost <laughs> most of the games. So you could have a little more fun. Uh, but once Coach Dye came and you could tell it was a whole different regime and things started to shift and lock in place. And the first time we beat Bama, um, you could just feel a monumental moment happening in the Auburn football program. So dad sort of bled across into basketball, um, swimming, they would call him for, for funerals or counseling or um, suicides, drug addiction. We'd get calls all, all hours of the night. Um, for things like that. And it wasn't on, on um, it, it would happen where some Monday mornings I'd wake up and there'd be a football player in the guest room that had come, you know, in the middle of the night for one reason or another. So he was just a wonderful ear and a heart for anybody that needed it. So great what man. A, what, a rock experience. Star. What, a, what childhood memories. Gosh, and that's, uh, his work obviously was off the field, which is much more important, but on the field, it really was, Auburn was coming into its heyday. It didn't hurt that they recruited that fella from McAdory High School, uh, as well as on the baseball team, the, the, the swim program had some- Basketball, um, Barkley. I was just getting ready to say, and basketball as well. The 80s were, were very good to, to Auburn sports, yeah. having your dad there and, and you by his side. I bet those were some very cool memories back in the day. Yeah, I would go to spring training with him some just for fun. And, you know, I didn't understand all of the ins and outs and the politics of football. I just loved the game. And I loved that these guys were playing it for heart, that they weren't paid, mm -hmm. you know, that they weren't paid. Well, <laughs> you could insert a joke there, but I won't um, in the college world. But they, they played with heart and they loved each other. And the team sport, you know, atmosphere it was just amazing and I remember him coming home from a recruiting trip um, that he'd gone to meet somebody's mama and he said there's this kid named Vincent mm -hmm. who's gonna be amazing mm -hmm. and I was like oh that's cool whatever you know I'm little, whatever oh whatever I think they're all amazing and and he was of course we all knew what was gonna happen so very cool well I Sissy uh, Carol Reynolds certainly remembers your dad from when she was at Auburn. She twirled at Auburn. He spoke yeah. with her, and he later performed at at their wedding. So yeah. he he certainly knew a lot of folks and touched a lot of a lot of lives. But let's pivot from there for a few minutes. Let's talk about going to Northview. What was it like going to this massive high school as a ninth grader? How scary was it, or was it uh, scary at all for you? It's a big physical uh, space, <laughs> kind of looked like my sister at the time, my sister's 10 years older than me. So she had started looking at colleges and I remember going with her and I was like, this place looks like a college more than a, a high school. Um, but because I had gone to sixth grade at Honeysuckle and seventh and eighth grade at Girard, and then also had friends from First Baptist Church that went to you know other middle schools and we all came together at Northview. I knew so many people, it really wasn't quite as scary. I think the academic side was a little scarier just because the classes were bigger. You were expected to you know take notes and there were more tests and classes like geometry and physics <laughs> you didn't necessarily have in middle school. That's right, that's right. Let's Let's yeah. stick on the, the academics part of it. I know you were very close and fond of Mrs. Spivey and Mr. Helms and so many other teachers. What was it about their spirit? What was it about their enthusiasm that just made high school memorable for you, good or bad? I think uh, the overarching thing with both of those guys and all of the teachers that would be on the top 10 are that they first and foremost cared about the students. They really cared not just about your grade in their class, but they cared about you uh, and what was going on in your life, whether it was at school or in your home life. And they weren't nosy, but they certainly cared about your well-being. Um, and th those two in particular actually taught me, Mr. Helms, for sure, how to study. No one had ever really taken that approach 
Um, and I got through a lot of classes in college because of the way Mr. Helms taught us. And it was hard. I mean, you had to study. You couldn't just sleepwalk. Um, I'm a ferocious reader and I memorize pretty quickly, but I had to study for his class. So uh, I thank him for that every chance I get. I, sure. I probably took as many classes from Mr. Helms as I could. And he yeah. was probably the biggest influence why I majored in history uh, at Vanderbilt. So that's really, I'm there with you. Did you save all your notebooks? Like I, I don't have them now, but I saved them. I, uh, I still have two from high school. I do. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. And I still have a report that Jeff Lupinacci and I did on the state of Alabama. Get that. Wow. The um, rivers and all that, the counties. That's right. That's exactly right. I want to welcome, let's see, we got Anthony Spann is with us, Vicki Benton Olive, Lawrence Dossey. Uh, hey. Let's see. Jason Whoa. says he had Mr. Helms for world history, and Helms and Pierce were huge football fans. They sure were great supporters. Yeah of the programs. Mr. Helms loved to recap the games on Monday uh, sure did. Right before we started the class. But Autumn, when you, when you were in middle school, did you mm -hmm. participate in sports, band, or do any other extracurricular uh, school-related activities? I did band both at Honeysuckle and at Gerard. So I had Mrs. Whetstone at Honeysuckle, which if anybody went to Honeysuckle, they'll remember the Whetstone family. Mm -hmm. um, and then at Gerard, I ha and I was thinking about this the other day, our middle school band director, and I can't for the life of me remember his name, I could look it up, but he ended up writing the song Penny Lover for Lionel Richie. <laughs> so, <laughs> so he left us the middle of eighth grade year, because when you write a song for Lionel Richie, that's what you can do. Apparently they had been childhood friends and Lionel had asked him to arrange a song and then he ended up writing that song and so he left us so then we had a sub the rest of the year but I'll never forget that and we would just listen to that song nonstop, even though it wasn't really that great of a song <laughs> for what, an eighth was he a, was he also a teacher at the school uh, he taught music and then band um, mm -hmm. and I want to say he taught English as well I can't remember well, have to any, any of you in the audience if you, you yeah. remember who this is throw it throw it out there I cannot remember his name for the life of me sweet sweet man and had you had you gone to any Northview sporting events prior to coming to high school? Yes, I would go with dad, actually. We'd go to the Northview games on Friday night, and then on Saturday morning, we'd leave and head to Auburn or wherever the team was. So if, if Auburn was out of town, we would go with them and couldn't go to a game. But if Northview was in town and Auburn was home, we would be at a Northview game. And then Saturday mornings, we'd leave at about 5.30, 6 a.m. and head to Auburn. Which was great, you I'm know, sure. for I'm most sure. kids, they hated it, getting up early on Saturday, but I'm like, football! That's right, that's, that's, that's great. Now, did you, when you got to high school and you're settling into your classes and just figuring out eighth graders do, it's such a weird time for, for all kids that age, but did you already know or have an idea that you wanted to either be in the band, play tennis, or do some other things uh, in addition to just being a student? Well, I played, my dad was a tennis player and a track player and a punter at Georgia Tech. <laughs> um, he was too little to do anything else, he says, but we, we played tennis almost every night of the summer. And so when I got to Northview, I thought, you know, why not? Um, why not give it a try? So I did and made the team, uh, the JV team in ninth grade, and then moved up a little bit in 10th grade to lower string varsity and then all while being involved with band and theater and my dad in somewhere in the middle of 10th grade said okay let's look at this are you going to go to Wimbledon or are you going to you know head in the music direction and it was obvious you know Robin Dunseth was the one going to Wimbledon not me right, um, right. We, so I sort of let the tennis thing slide and um, just played for fun with my dad uh, and decided to focus on music and theater just because that was what I felt was sort of my world. And who was the, the coach or the sponsor of the, the girls team back then? The girls team was Ashley, um, uh, what's her last name? Ask me in a second, I'll be able to tell you. And I want to say maybe Mr. Dykes was the boys coach. He was. Mm -hmm. um, oh, I'm seeing her. Uh, um, It'll come to you. It'll yeah. come to me in a minute because her daughter was a year younger than me and mm -hmm. a good friend of mine. 
So I'll think of it in a minute. That's all right. That's all right. Well, let's let's talk about the football program and your experience in ninth grade. Ninth grade for you is also my brother Rob's ninth grade. That was my senior year. We had a pretty yeah. decent, exciting season. It was and, pretty good, yeah. And were you part of the band that year, or what? Talk to us a little bit about Mr. Christian and yep. that. Yep. So every freshman. Um, if you wanted to be a major ed or flag corps drill team, any of that, you had to do, you had to march and learn an instrument your freshman year, which I thought was pretty smart on his part, uh, because then you, those that didn't know how to read music or have great rhythm had to have an instrument under their belt and understand what the other people were sort of going through. So freshman year, I played flute which was awesome. Uh, and we, you know, we followed you guys around and had just as many heart attacks as you did. And at one in three, it's like, it was one in three, right? To start with. And we're like, what, you know, and then you guys whoop, shifted your season and found some deep down passion and just killed it. Well, we, we had the, not the luxury, we had the benefit of having a future NFL player come back from injury. This is true. Uh, yeah, Lawrence, Lawrence <laughs> came back and just yeah. just sparked us. Michelle oh, yeah. Andrews. It's Michelle Andrews. Michelle Andrews, that's it. That's yep. it. Yes. Yes. And Thank Alana you. is her daughter, of course. Alana, uh, yes. I will tell you from my experience, one of the, the greatest Friday night feelings is it, us in the locker room just before the game, and we are directly below the band in the student section. Mm -hmm. And we knew you guys were there because it was so loud, whether it was stomping in the stadium stairs and steps or yep. the band playing its tunes and the, whatever, we knew you guys were there. And if anyone dares to say that that doesn't make a difference to a team, then they haven't experienced it because it absolutely makes all the difference. Our stands were usually 90% full on our side. And that was largely led by what you guys were doing. And I always appreciated what the band did. I never got to see what the band did, but right. we could always hear the band. And so take us on a, a typical Friday afternoon after school, going to the game and, and that mm -hmm. leading up to the game time for you. So we would do the pep rally, which was always exciting. Uh, and then we would go see you guys off whatever that meant out in the field, the buses, what have you. And then if the game was in town, we would all meet at the stadium and uh, meet underneath, warm up, march in and play in the stands until time for you guys to enter when we'd play the fight song. Now, if you were out of town, it was sort of a different deal. The pep rally was either earlier in the day or sometimes the day before, depending on where you played. Um, we would all go on our, we usually took two to three buses. You know, we were huge at that time. We marched several hundred um, and we would go, pull up at a mall and I can just imagine anybody in the mall going, no, here comes all these teenagers. And we would descend upon the mall and the cheerleaders were usually there too. So we would nine times out of 10, we'd hold an impromptu pep rally in the food court, which we never really got in trouble for. Um, but we'd be dancing and singing and cheering. And then we'd head to the stadium. We would dress on the buses, which was always fun and pull into the stadium. And then we'd look in the other stands and be like, eh, they don't have nearly the band or the, the student body is always what we would look at. Um, the support, we got this, we got this. You know, that was kind of always our, until we went to Robert E. Lee and Robert E. Lee always brought out the whole town, it felt like at the time. And I don't I don't know if that was just the powerhouse that they were um, the years that we were mm -hmm. at Northview. But when we would pull into Montgomery, you know, whether it was Lanier, Carver, Jeff Davis, Robert E. Lee was sort of always the one that we were afraid, not afraid of, but got a little more nervous. And maybe that was just from a, from our student perspective. Well, um, certainly they, they did support their teams back in the in the 80s, that's for sure. I want to welcome Josh Andrews, Charles Bronson, Steve Stutz. Let's see who else has rolled in here. Thank Hi you guys. all for coming in. I'm talking with Autumn Baggett Toussaint, and we're just reliving some good times. We're in Autumn's freshman year 
the fall of, of 85. And the band was, it, it was one of the bigger bands that I recall back at, at that time. We also had a drill team and flag corps and gosh, it must have been collectively close to 200 people or maybe more, I, I really don't know. But I know that Mr. Christian did such a great job of, of leading the band. In fact, didn't one part of the band or one of the smaller um, offsets of the band win state competition that year? Yes, um, I want to say it was either the drum line or the horn line. We would go to all these band competitions in March and they grade you and all that kind of stuff. Um, so that was an award. That's the year we had Calvin Bottoms. Um, Brenda Register was our drum major. Um, all kinds of people, the, the upperclassmen were, most of them went on to major in music in college too, which is awesome. Just very, very talented classmates that were my, my year. Well, take us to the night of the game. What was your favorite part of, uh, of the game experience? And take us through what you were able to watch or observe. I know you had responsibilities all through the game and halftime, but to what right. extent could you enjoy or get into the game itself? We got to watch all the way up to about four minutes left in the second quarter. And that's when we had to start heading down to the field. Um, but my freshman year, you had to constantly watch with your instrument, like right here, because every time you guys scored or even made a first down, we would play the fight song or, um, I don't know, you know, Pee Wee Herman's theme song, something. So we always sort of had to have one eye on the game and one mm -hmm. eye on Brenda register that year. Uh -huh. um, now, as I got to be an upperclassman and moved on into the flag corps and the drill team, I didn't have an instrument to worry about. Mm -hmm. So I didn't have to keep one eye on them. We'd hear the song and instinctively know what, yeah. you know, what we were doing or whatever, Vogue or whatever. Um, so yeah. it got more fun as the years went on when I could put the instrument. I didn't have an instrument anymore, but it was fun. And even when we were on the field uh, trying to line up for halftime, we would, we would all be watching the game. In fact, we'd get hit sometimes or be asked to move out of the way because we were literally walking, trying to see what was going on, especially freshman year because <laughs> the games would turn on a dime uh, and we didn't want to miss out on anything and yeah. did you find yourself educating your classmates or not your classmates but your bandmates who were near you of answering questions what just happened and yes. all that kind of thing yes. what does that mean I don't <laughs> understand what's going on yeah and you're trying to and a lot of them would turn to me just because they knew my Auburn mm -hmm what I did on Saturday mornings in my world. And they're like, what does that mean? What, what does the three and the four mean? Or this is a huge play. Why is this a huge play? I don't get it. Um, but for the most part, they were pretty educated. And there was uh, one year where Mr. Christian actually passed out a little pop quiz and, and was trying to educate people a little more. I think he felt like there were some folks who didn't know enough about football, just the basics, basic, basic. Sure, basic. sure. <laughs> Well, what, what made it so much fun for you? Uh, the, the, the band atmosphere at a game, you can't beat it. I mean, you can't beat the atmosphere at a game, but when you've got the student body and the cheerleaders and the players and you're all working for a common goal, which is to win, um, but to have fun and to just support each other no matter what. So even when the team lost, we still play the fight song. We'd still sing the alma mater. We'd still do the cheers, even if we were down 42 to nothing um, or in the third overtime, you know, it didn't matter um, mm -hmm. where we were. You, you were all, it was a true team sport and you represented your school mm -hmm. and that's what we were there for. So it was, it was really, there were a lot of tears shed, you know, high schoolers. That's what sure, you do. Sure. They, were true. They, they were from the heart back then. Yeah. And, and those pep rallies, particularly when Dr. Smith ended it with his famous, poem and clicked his heels. Those were so much fun and so legendary back in the day. And, and the younger generations, I, I just don't know if they would have had that same type of atmosphere that we were so fortunate to go through every week. Take us through a typical pep rally for you and what, what, what memories do you have of that? For sure, Dr. Smith, um, the loud atmosphere, you know, in that gym behind you. Mm -hmm. 
have all of the, the sound bouncing off the wall, um, everyone yelling, the, the class competitions between whose class was louder. You know, and you know what else? I also remember I was telling my husband this the other day. I can remember walking in um, and I sat with the band, of course, or, or a flag core drill team, but a student could walk into the gym and sit with their class and not necessarily worry about who they were sitting next to. I think Morphew just sort of had that atmosphere, um, not just at pep rallies, but all the time, but for sure at pep rallies, you, you could kind of sit with whomever you wanted. And I look back at pictures of classmates and they're sitting with people who weren't necessarily in their little circle, but it didn't matter because we were all there for one reason and it was to celebrate and to, to cheer on our teams. And I think that's what's so cool. It was, it was that school spirit. And one of the things that I distinctly remember is the cheerleaders came up with such intricate uh, routines that got everybody just going uh, and clapping. But you're right, it was as loud as any concert you'd go to. It was, it really was a great way to send off the team each week. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But nothing replaced Dr. Smith's poem and everyone in the gym finishing the poem with him was so yeah. much fun. Don't meet me there, beat me there, yeah. 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 Well, and he, you know, he retired after, was it my freshman year, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, so we didn't have those poems anymore. And I remember the, the first pep rally of him being on, we were all kind of like, oh man. So I can't remember who got up and grabbed the microphone and did it, somebody from the senior class. Oh, wow. Uh, just doing it and we were like yeah That's um, awesome. that continued for about a year and then I think it didn't happen anymore but we would still chant it even though it wasn't being led so <laughs> let's let's kind of fast forward a little bit to the state championship game did you ride up with the butt with the team did you ride up with your family and friends take us through that experience a little bit I rode up with the band um, and I think our church brought like four buses, you know, 300 people just, and they didn't all have kids that were playing. They didn't have kids in the band or cheerleaders. They were just Dothan citizens who were super proud of Northview. Um, and so we brought a huge contingent there, but I rode with the band and we went to the Galleria. <laughs> of course. Lunch and we had, I think we met the cheerleaders there. I can't remember, but we had a pep rally in the food court and people were like, we don't know what's going on, but whatever. And then I remember walking into, uh, you know, Legion Field where I had just been the week before where Auburn got beat pretty badly. Yeah, um, that, that's the Van Tiffin long field goal. Yes, yes. We were there as well on opposite yep. sides. Yeah, yeah. Of the game. Yep. yep. And I remember walking back up. 25,000 people and Huffman has like four. It just felt so um, uneven. And I, you know, I don't know what, I think our whole town just showed up. Even Dothan High people were there. It was, it was magical and it did. It felt like a Super Bowl or something. There were uh, just cheers and it, oh, it was just crazy. And we knew after, oh, I don't know, the first about four minutes, you just had this feeling, we're gonna win this thing. Even though it kind of started out a little wonky with, they intercepted her. I can't remember, but I remember they scored first, right? That's right. And then their next drive in the first quarter, they were driving again. Bobby Estes made a good stop. Aristotle picks Aristotle, up. Aristotle Kirkland, that's right. Yeah. That, that changed the whole game. Absolutely. Yeah. What about performing at halftime or performing during the game? How memorable was that? That was crazy. Um, we wore white shoes at the time and they were not white after that game. They were green, just that field, you know, a whole different turf, um, whole different feeling. And we, in the middle of that halftime show, that's when I played flute. I wasn't on the, the drill flag court yet, but the band, the whole band danced. Um, and so I just remember, <laughs> remember everybody had green up to their knees just from hitting the field and um, it was crazy, but it was fun. And it felt like 40,000 people. It really yeah. did. I, I think there were close to 80,000 in my mind. Oh, at least. <laughs> at least. And ESPN covered it, right? That's, that's exactly yeah. right. Yeah. And the blimp, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we want to thank uh, Vern and Gary for doing the TV game that right. night. Right, right. <laughs> that's crazy. Well, 
let's let's kind of move into your your next years in high school. Um, the the next following years were certainly exciting, but not quite getting to the final yeah. games like that. You also switched in what you were participating in. So what what made you switch from uh, playing an instrument and just kind of share whatever memories or experiences you have of those years? Yeah, so after freshman year, a group of us went to um, Mr. Christian, who I wish we could get him on here. He, he would just be a wealth of stories. I, I don't know if we're being recorded. Of course, we are, I've tried, and Miss C has tried, but we're going to get him sometime. We, yeah, we'll okay. get him on we'll here. Get we'll get or get his wife on here. She knows just as many stories, Miss Christian. Yeah. Uh, a group of us went to Mr. Christian and said, you know, we want to twirl things and dance. Mm -hmm. um, and the way that it was set up at that point, the gals were awesome, but they just twirled flags. They didn't really do anything interesting. And it was sort of just kind of like the icing on the cake. And they did a great job, but we wanted a little more hardcore, um, a little more involved. And we wanted to see rifles and ribbons and all that, you know, fun stuff. So he said, sure. So we got, you know, about, oh gosh, I think about 26 of us that first year, my sophomore year. So wow. we sort of, sort of morphed it and, and began to do different things and try different things with the band. And it was just awesome. It was just awesome. And the football team did pretty well. We didn't go to state again, um, but it wasn't horrible. We had, we had great years and it was fun supporting them and the you know a band is a family just like a football team and you all work together and we had highs and lows and ups and downs and we won some competitions and um, lost some competitions and we got to to do some things at basketball games we had some good basketball years in there yeah certainly as well good really I'll, good basketball years yeah i'll tell you one of my uh fond memories is when the football team is practicing and you guys were practicing on your field. We obviously had to walk either through or around your field right. to get to the, the football uh, field. But getting to hear you guys do your thing while we're on the field just made it a little more tolerable in that August heat for us. I don't know about y'all seeing us do our thing had any impact, but hearing you guys really <laughs> helped a little bit just dealing with that oppressive heat and, and the way the coaches demanded, you know, expectations on the practices. Right. Well, it makes you feel like you're kind of all in this together and it reminds you why you're doing it. You know, we're doing this to support them mm -hmm. and Hey, we're over here killing ourselves, but they're supporting us. So it just was yeah. sort of a whole team school spirit that you talk about. Yeah. And I wonder if the generations after that experienced those things, I haven't, uh, had the the I haven't gotten anybody from the band uh, or cheerleading squads in the last several years, and then they'll come on. But I I'll, I'll be interested to hear their experience compared to yours or, or mine uh, from back in our time. Yeah, I mean we'd like to think we had the best years, right? And oh, I, sure. I absolutely we did, and I think my class of '89 was amazing. Um, your class was just as amazing. Ours was better, but you know whatever. Um, but I do think Northview during those years was really special. Uh, just there were things happening and um, it just felt like everybody got along. I know that's strange, but that just means everybody supports everybody. Well, it's, it's, and this may be the old guy in me. It was a simpler time. It, it was, society was different. We didn't have social media. We didn't have a lot of these things that impact us uh, back then. And it was just, I don't know. That's the only way I can really describe it. It was just a little simpler. Yeah. Uh, and maybe that's what also helped to afford or helped to, to generate that school spirit that it just seemed yeah. like all through the school year. It didn't have to be sports. It could be anything right. else that was going on. It just was a fun time for the most part. I mean, there were ups and downs, but for the most part, just being in high school, there are a lot of memories there. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to test your memory a little bit. Oh, great. I'm going to fail, I'm sure. <laughs> who, no, you're, you're not. I want you to, who were some of your closer friends, either in the band, ninth grade, or, or on the, the drill team or flag corps, uh, who you really just kind of hung around with? Yeah, um, some of my bestest, my bestest friends, uh, Lisa Park, for sure, and one of the cheerleaders, so um, kind of was around, you know, her world 
through saw the cheerleaders through her eyes a great bit. Um, I had a lot of really good guy friends, mainly because of church, Kevin Harrison, Keith Harrison, Mark Andrews, Andy Arrington, and of course, Stephen Collins, mm-hmm. um, whose brother Kevin played at Auburn, which was amazing for me. Yeah, Kevin was one yeah, of my, one of my linemen. That's right. Yeah. Oh, for sure. For sure. Um, and you know, best girlfriends, Grace Reynolds, Laura Fagan, um, Oh my gosh. Love, love my CC, my CC cotton, even though she was older than me, she gave me some great advice. She probably doesn't remember that, but she did. I'm I'm sure she does. Yeah. Yeah. So many, so many friends and so much love and what's really cool. um, And I know this is true for you too. I'm sure Mm -hmm. is I keep in touch with probably 50% of them, which I think is amazing. That is amazing, but it's also it's it's the power of social media. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I come across not just because of this show on Wednesdays or the Northview Group, but really just because of social media as a whole. You just kind of yeah. connect with people, and that's that's what I think is such a great thing. Plus, doing this based kind of an oral history of our program, and, and right. it just helps to bring different generations uh, together to remember a lot of common themes like what's over my shoulder that cougar on the the wall in the gym was there one version of it or another for almost 40 years and and really when you see the different pictures you can whoever it is can pr- pretty much tell you oh that was there my time or and so right. forth right so that, that's it's one not anymore it's not it's a wolf now right i haven't been in the new school uh, since all of that, but I'm sure that it's whatever the you know, the wolf uh, wolves is, which is still just kind of weird for all of us. No. Yeah. Well, Autumn, we've just got just a couple of more minutes, and I appreciate you taking us down memory lane and sharing some of your experiences. And I, I wanted to ask you a little bit about theater, and I also wanted to ask you a little bit about summer band camps and some of those experiences, because I know you guys uh competed all year round but i know that the most i don't know if it was the most important or maybe the hardest competitions were in the summertime so let's go there first before we hit the the theater experience yeah you know to pack up a band of 200 kids and take them to a competition um first of all it's not cheap because you got to rent either greyhound but you got to rent something with air conditioner um and then you got to feed them you got to uniform them you know, all those things. So we had a great band boosters and athletic boosters that would all sort of work together to make sure we got to these competitions. And they were somewhere in Florida, somewhere in Alabama, you know, we'd probably go to two or three a year. Most were marching, dancing, you know, all that kind of stuff, just straight up competitions like you'd think. And we would always be there with the Robert E. Lee. Um, Most of the schools were from Montgomery that would compete. Uh, and once in a while, we would go head to head with Dothan High, and that was always fun because we usually came out on top. Ah. I will say, yeah, yeah. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Yeah, nice. well, and I also know that that most of your uh, high school years and well beyond, you've been involved in the theater in one form or another. We had a very active theater, mm-hmm. uh, and so just share a little bit of those experiences with us uh, from what you did. Yeah, I started taking, you know, I guess it was just called theater arts or what have you in ninth grade. Um, And it always kind of dabbled in it through the years in other places and really bit a hold of it. It it set in. And then when you combine my music world with the theater world, it was just a beautiful combination. So I majored in musical theater at Sanford. um, And then when I graduated from Sanford, I got picked up to do what's called um, sort of like in in Birmingham when the national, the Broadway tours that tour, of course they're not touring now because of COVID, Um, but I did that, the national tours in Europe. Mm -hmm. So I was able to do that throughout Europe and also get a master's degree at the same time because they had just started doing some like email assignments. I won't call it online. Right. but you could work out a deal. So University of Oklahoma had a campus and an arrangement with University of Heidelberg. Mm -hmm. So I was able to get a master's degree while I was touring, which was crazy, but I did it. I worked my tail off and I did it. And I stayed in Europe for six years Mm -hmm. and decided I was kind of 
tired of waking up in a hotel and not really knowing what, what city am I in? What, and you'd have, even though you were in a show, you'd have nightmares of being on stage and not knowing your, you know, it just got crazy. Um, so moved back to the States and my brother was living in Minnesota at the time. And he said, um, come give me a year. So I signed on with a theater um, here in Minnesota. He said, just come give it a try for one year. And I met my husband three months after moving here. I was going to say, what year was that? <laughs> that was, um, I moved here the day that Jesse Ventura was elected governor. And my dad, <laughs> what a my, memory. <laughs> you know, my dad was literally like, oh, heck no. You are not staying in a state where Jesse Ventura is the governor. And my brother um, said to him, you know, he can't do that much damage. So I stayed and that was November of, that would have been 98. And I met my husband in February of 99. Wow. It's amazing. Yeah. How things how things work out, but I, I, I did, I knew I'd forget one thing. I know that, and, and I hate to jump around, but I don't want to get away from this because I know this was an, uh, an important experience for you that you sold merchandise with others before the games and during the ball games, whether it was right. basketball or, or football. So yeah. I didn't, I didn't appreciate or realize that there was a name for the, the girls or, or yeah. whoever it was. The Cougar girls. Yeah, I didn't know that they, that's yeah. the name given to them. So how did, how did one become a Cougar girl and what did you guys uh -huh. do? <laughs> so they had volunteers do it forever and it would end up being parents that were already at the game. And then they, somebody along the line saw how many students were at the baseball and the basketball mm -hmm. and clearly football games and just said, you know, we ought to make this a thing. Um, so you would be put into different groups of, okay, you're going to work the second half of this game or, you know, what have you. So it was still volunteer, but they just named you um, and they chose, I think there were like 16 of us every year or what have you. Um, and even at the football games, I was able to sign up and do like the fourth quarter Mm -hmm. um because I could cut the halftime was over and all that but it was fun because you got to see your classmates and we got free merch so you got free shirts and hats and um it was really fun at the basketball games because you could actually see the basketball court and what was going on mm -hmm. from the little lobby now at the football games you were underneath so you were having yeah. to rely on your ear mm -hmm. um so I really like doing the basketball games better because I could watch the game actually instead of just here's a shirt for 12 dollars or whatever yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it's fun. I don't know if they if they continued that after our class graduated because I think most of them were my age um, and and may have graduated. So I don't know if they kept doing that or not. I'm sure they, in some form or fashion, had to have continued doing that. I hope so. I hope now they're the Wolf Girls, I guess. <laughs> well, selling merch was was a good fundraiser for uh, mm -hmm. the sports programs, the athletic department. Well, anyway. Yeah. Autumn, thank you for taking us through the high school yeah. years and your experiences. This is so much fun. And sure. I appreciate you sharing all that with us tonight. Of course. Thanks for having me. This has been awesome. Love well, catching up with everybody. It's absolutely my pleasure. And then, guys, as I've been telling you uh, for this past year, and we've got a bunch more folks lined up uh, in the upcoming weeks. Every Wednesday night at 7 o'clock Central, we have conversations with Cougars, and we're just I guess telling the oral history of the program and sharing some memories and just reliving some good times. So thank you again, Autumn. I really appreciate it. Awesome. That. Of course, of course. Good to see everybody. You, you guys be safe. Please wear a mask, social distance, that whole thing. We're going to get through this and we'll see you next Wednesday night. Take care.